Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in this week's episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions. I had to best go ahead and answer them. The cover on the gameplay here, as you guys are probably well aware, this past weekend was Memorial Weekend, and as a result of that, we had a double XP event on Black Ops 2 and a Nuketown 24-7 playlist, so I played some of that with subscribers, and that's what this week's gameplay is going to be from. I got lots of gameplay on Nuketown. It's kind of crazy, because whenever there's a double XP weekend on that game, I go back there and I usually play Nuketown 24-7, it's like, okay, so I've got like a full inventory here of Nuketown gameplay that'll last me for a year, which is pretty funny, but Nuketown's a fun map. I enjoy playing it, and I'm playing with subscribers as well, so that's a whole lot of fun. But you're not here for gameplay, ladies and gentlemen. At least a lot of you aren't. I guarantee it. I guarantee a lot of you guys have me open on your second monitor right now. A lot of you guys probably have me open up on your phone or your tablet while you're playing some other game, or perhaps you got me open up on your internet in the background while you're playing a different game, either on your Xbox or on your PC. I know what you guys are doing. I'm background noise. I'm being background noise to a lot of you right now, but there are some people. There are some people that watch the gameplay, so hopefully uh, those of you guys that do watch gameplay for Dear Nero can go ahead and enjoy that, because uh, Nuketown, once again, Again, fantastic map. But let's hop in here with the questions. Let's hop in here to the... Actually, I have a lot of questions this week. I need to uh, try and not stay on one question for too long because without realizing it, I grabbed a lot of questions for this week's episode of Dear Nero. So, let's hop into this with the very first one. He's going to write, Dear Nero, In your real life zombie apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice from Faisal in Ohio? So, Faisal, this is a question that I think a lot of people want to know, right? A lot of people are interested in the entire idea of a zombie apocalypse. What's my plan? What am I going to do in the zombie apocalypse? So, I don't really have a set plan or really a set strategy besides maybe just going to a relative's house out in the country, something like that. But in terms of my weapon of choice, I have two weapons because I actually own two weapons in real life. So, I own a Winchester 1897. It's actually a 30-30 lever action rifle, and I've been hunting with that ever since I started hunting. It used to be my uncle's, and he passed away. Then I got his gun, and I've hunted with it ever since. And I like that, and I I would definitely use that quite a bit, but the thing about it is I don't have a lot of ammo for it. So if a zombie apocalypse were to really happen, I would use the Winchester as much as I could because it's pretty it's pretty usable, right? The lever actions, you can shoot really quickly. There's, you can watch videos on YouTube of how quickly people can shoot a lever action rifle. It's pretty crazy. But the other weapon I own is actually a Mosin Nagant, right? A World War II era Mosin Nagant Russian infantry rifle. That's what I purchased. They're so mass produced uh, during World War II that you can actually get Mosin Nagants ridiculously cheaply here in the United States. Uh, keep in mind, you're not can you get like a sniper rifle variant of it? A sniper variants basically have a bent, um, uh, they have a bent bolt, whereas the infantry rifles basically have a straight bolt, which it's pretty easy to replace that. Of course, it's going to cost you money to be able to buy a bent bolt, but uh, just the way the scope is designed, you need the bent bolt instead of the straight one for it to actually mount the scope on there. So it's pretty weird and pretty interesting that that's how it works. But yeah, they're so mass produced, uh, maybe $100, right? $100 to $120 is what you can expect to spend on a Mosnagon. It's pretty cheap. The thing about it is, they take a special kind of ammo. It's going to be 7.62 by 54R. And that ammo, for me anyway, was kind of expensive. The Purchase because you couldn't buy, you know, just 30 rounds of this ammo or something like that in a little box. I had to buy a spam can. Now, what I'm going to do for you guys is put a picture on your screen right now of what this looks like. So, this is a spam can that has 440 rounds in it, and that's the exact kind of spam can that I purchased because there's no way to buy only like a couple bullets of this special kind of round that the Mosnagon takes. Oh no, you have to buy a spam can, which costs almost more than the gun itself and has 440 rounds. So, I have a giant spam can behind me just full of ammo because I haven't even shot my Mosin yet. So, so it's it's pretty funny that I have all that ammo. So I guess it would be the uh, Winchester that I would use the most uh, right towards the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. And assuming you know, God willing, that I survive long enough, I end up running out of ammo on that because I don't have, uh, of course, that many bullets because I use it for hunting season. You know, I buy one box of it, sighting in my gun, plus you know, even actually hunting itself, I don't use the whole box. You know, that one box will last me two or three years. It's only like 30 bullets. You know, so uh, I think I'd run out of ammo on that pretty quickly. Then I'll move over to the most, and that would be my plan. Next question. This one a bit more serious. First one, we're like, oh yeah, let's have some fun, zombie apocalypse, what kind of weapons do you own, that kind of stuff. And then the second question is a little bit more serious. Let's hop into this. He's going to write, Dear Nero, this is a very personal question, but I am going through a particularly bad time with life and multiple issues. I struggle with severe anxiety and depression, among other things, and it can make even the most basic tasks for people a total nightmare for me. Just this Monday, I received an invitation to your open lobby, but was so anxious I couldn't join it. I wonder if you've ever gone through any hard times, and what advice would you give to people in my 
my situation. If you answered it, it would mean a lot to me. Keep up the fantastic work, and I wish you all the best. Anonymous from England. So, Anonymous, uh, of course, without giving out who you are or what your name is online or anything like that, I, I did recognize your YouTube name, and I did actually send you an invite. I recall your name because I think your YouTube name is the same as your gamer tag. I do remember sending you an invite, but you didn't, of course, join the open lobby that I had on Monday, and I just assumed maybe there was a connection issue. I assumed I didn't really think anything of it. I'm like, hey, maybe there's a connection issue. Maybe you can't connect. Maybe you had to go do something because people do have real lives outside of Xbox. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, I didn't think too much of it, but it's kind of sad to hear that the reason you couldn't join is because you felt so anxious about it that it was kind of freaking you out. Now, I here's maybe something uh, people don't know. One second here. It's over here on my desk, so, so I remember to take them every day. Actually, I haven't taken it yet today, but uh, I actually have a bottle of anti-anxiety medication right here, and I started taking that. Uh, was it last week's episode of Dear Nero? It might have been last week's where we went on, is your last week or the week before, where we went on a very long part of that video talking about my journey of quitting smoking and quitting nicotine and how ridiculously hard that was and the heart problems I was having as a result of it. And part of that was when I went to the doctor and stuff and they couldn't figure out why my heart was pounding and I told them it might have been the nicotine but they said well maybe it's an anxiety thing or maybe it's a combination of you know getting nicotine out of my body plus anxiety and anxiety from you know getting rid of nicotine completely and it's like whatever they ended up prescribing me Prozac which is of course an anti-anxiety medication and apparently anxiety runs in the family uh, a couple relatives of mine have anxiety and are on the exact same medication that I've been taking and I'm not even entirely positive if I necessarily need this medication but I take it every day regardless and it seems to help. Uh, things have been good. Things have been very, very good lately for me. So my first question to you is, are you actually depressed and actually anxious? Are you clinically diagnosed with either of these disorders? That's a big thing. I think something that a lot of people do on the internet now is they self-diagnose themselves with things, which is not a good thing. Don't ever self-diagnose yourself with anxiety or depression or anything like that. You can actually get that kind of stuff checked out. Now, it could be you know, something that would be kind of weird to talk to your parents like, I think I may be anxious. I think I may be depressed but it's something that you might want to actually talk to people about because there are fixes and there are cures for these kinds of things. So keep that in mind. Uh, don't try and bottle up those emotions. Don't try and bottle up and hide these things rather than actually trying to go and get them tested out, go and get, go and get some tests done. But yeah, I guess that's the best advice I can give you as somebody who's not trained or qualified whatsoever to be talking about this particular topic and somebody who may or may not be anxious, not really sure, and somebody who knows I'm not depressed, right? It's hard for me to give advice on something like that, but uh, just try to enjoy your time man just try to enjoy your life that's all you really need to do it's all we have to do with our time on this earth is just try to enjoy ourselves that's it just try to enjoy your lives man life is too short to be feeling anxious and depressed about things i understand i'm not, I'm not one of those people that's like oh the depression is not really a thing or I'm not one of those people that's like uh, anxiety social anxiety is not a thing just get over it you know I, just because i may not suffer from that exact same thing doesn't mean i can't acknowledge that it exists i understand that people uh, do actually have stuff like that and problems with it and and there are people that can get through it. And you'll be one of the people that get through it. It's just going to take a little bit of time, right? And so uh, just give it the time it needs. Uh, follow the proper steps. Uh, listen to your medical professionals or maybe mental professionals. I'm not really sure who takes care of this. Once again, I'm not uh, I'm not in any way uh, qualified to speak on this. But um, I guess the only thing I can say is just try to live your lives, man. Just try to enjoy your lives the best you can. Because the time we have on this earth is far too short to be you know, worrying about little things like joining an open lobby or stuff like that. You know. Next question. And that was kind of a dark, sad, serious one. This one's a little bit less serious, but to some of you, it's going to be a very, very serious topic. Depends on what kind of player you are in Call of Duty. So, he's going to write, Dear Nero, I'm a knife-only player, which means that every time I get into a lobby in Call of Duty, I'm going to be using a tactical knife and a spike drone. I get into a match, and I play against people that have the TAC-19 sledgehammer, the Obsidian Steed, the Speakeasy, and the list goes on. I wanted to know, what is your opinion on everyone getting their weapon variants as supply drops, and the knifing community gets absolutely nothing? Not even a knife, a tactical knife or a spike drone with a camo on it like they have for riot shields and rockets. I wanted to know what is your opinion on the way a sledgehammer barely is even noticing that there is such a community as the knifing community. Thank you for your answer and keep up the amazing and wonderful work. Yaval from Israel. Yuval, maybe? It's Y-U-V-A-L. I think it's Yuval, maybe. All right, so this was something I never really thought about. And I think it's, I think what you said in your question is entirely plausible. I think that maybe Sledgehammer themselves is not really acknowledging the melee-only community. It's entirely possible. I don't see a lot of people that run around in melee-only in Advanced Warfare. I just don't. It's um, I can picture it in every Call of Duty game I've ever played, except for Advanced Warfare. I don't think even once I've been to a lobby where there's one person on the other team that was only using melee. It just, I haven't seen it. Uh, 
I'm sure it exists, but I haven't seen it. And perhaps Sledgehammer is on the same boat. I think there's something they could do very easily, right? Now, I, once again, not a game developer or anything like that, but I do think it's entirely possible that they could... Uh, add in pieces of DLC, or because goodness gracious, guys, you know how many things they are adding? Uh, different pe like, oh, check out this weird looking helmet, check out this uh, new pants, check out these gloves, check out they keep adding all these new crazy things, uh, basically just customization pieces for your character via supply drops. I think it's entirely plausible for them to add in various kinds of knives, right? That would be pretty cool, actually, wouldn't it? it? Instead of just having your basic standard combat knife, you have a bunch of different weird-looking ones with different camos and different designs and different shapes and stuff like that. How hard could it be? You don't even have to balance the things, right? Because it's a knife. It's either going to be a one-hit kill or it's not. You're either going to hit them and kill them or you're going to miss them and not. That's how knifing works. It'd be pretty simple. I know that's something I don't know much about the game itself, but I know that's something I do over there in Counter-Strike is uh, you get many different kinds of knives when they look different and they do different things apparently uh it looks interesting i see pe people posting up pictures of it a lot on twitter and stuff i've never played that game maybe i should but um yeah i see that so why couldn't they do that in advanced warfare why couldn't we have a bunch of cosmetic knife changes basically whenever you equip your tactical knife right you have a different one depending on what knives that you have unlocked via the supply drop sledgehammer Sledgehammer, this man just gave you a great idea. Hopefully you're watching this video, which, of course, why would Sledgehammer Games be watching Dear Nero? It doesn't make any sense, but maybe, maybe we'll tweet that. Maybe I'll tweet that out after we're done recording this. But, hey, Michael Condry, let's get this going here. What about the knife-only players? Because that's something I think even people that aren't knife-only players would like. Because I not about you guys, but I never have a secondary on my class. I always have a knife as a backup because I'd rather have an extra perk rather than having a pistol, right? So it'd be cool for me when I run out of ammo and I have to swap weapons or whatever for me to be able to have a cool-looking knife while I do it. Why not? I mean, you're adding in so many different pieces of, like, helmets and chest and cosmetic gear for our soldiers. Why not add in uh, knife cosmetic gears? Because that's really all it is. It's just going to be cosmetic stuff. The knife is still going to perform the same way. Who cares if it looks different or uh, it has a different shape or a different color or whatever, right? I think it's a pretty good idea. You fell from Israel, man. Telling you, that's an awesome idea. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I was wondering if you might consider doing a World at War custom zombie map lobby with subscribers. It wouldn't be difficult to set up, and since you enjoy playing World at War Zombies so much, I thought we might also enjoy playing a game with you. Love your videos. James from Australia. So James, that would be a lot of fun. You guys know, I, I caught last couple of Dear Nero's, I've been doing custom zombie stuff, doing custom zombie stuff on all this play channel as well. It's a lot of fun. I love custom zombies. So much fun to play. Uh, the idea of playing with subscribers is actually really relatively difficult. So number one, I need to add everybody on Steam. All right, I need to add everybody that would possibly want to play uh, World of War Custom Zombies with me. I would need to add them on Steam. Two, I would need to pick out the individual three people that I'm going to be playing with because there's going to be a lot of people that want to play, and I'm going to have to pick out three people of that group. Number three, we're all going to have the exact same mods installed. I don't know if you guys have ever actually done Custom Zombies with friends, but you all, of course, have to have the same mods all installed and try to join the same lobby. And it can sometimes be a pain in terms of connecting. Uh, regardless if you have this, all this uh, like, same stuff downloaded and installed, it can still be sometimes difficult. And then after that, that, of course, we're going to need some kind of voice. Now, I haven't even actually tried this. I'm fairly sure it'd be in the game, but uh, we would need to add each other on Skype and stuff like that, which I definitely don't want to be adding a bunch of people on Skype or anything like that, so we need to get some kind of voice over IP uh, for us to be able to speak to each other. And then, of course, there's the actual playing part, which could be pretty fun. The thing about that is, you're kind of like dead wrong in your question when you said it wouldn't be difficult to set up, because that's exactly what it is. It's difficult to set up. Now, playing uh, Call of Duty Zombies on the console isn't, isn't as hard you know if i wanted to play like black ops 2 zombies it's actually pretty easy i say hey if you guys want to play some die rise with me or something like that let's go do it you know and then i first three people send me a message i invite them into my lobby bam we're done we're playing we're good we're fine or even i can go and play grief mode you know we can play grief and that way i can get in seven people rather than only three Right, that's something I could do, but uh, the thing about it is, is just that's a lot easier than putting together, you know, custom zombies on the PC. That can be pretty rough overall. So I think uh, custom zombies is going to be between myself playing lots of maps solos as well as playing with my friends. I don't see it being very easy to get subscribers in there. If I were to play with subscribers and zombies, it would probably be on the console. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, did you ever go back to Black Ops 1 and make the AK-47 your most used gun? Jay from Florida. So Jay is a hardcore fan, I would say, because that is something I talked about doing a long time ago, and no, I haven't actually gone ahead and done it. So uh, Black Ops 1, I've played a bunch of. I have over 100,000 kills in that game. And the FAMAS, sadly, is my most used weapon, which, of course, is like the big OP gun in that game, right? Um, the AK-47 is my number two most used weapon. It's about 1,000 kills behind. And I've always said that 
sometime before like the end of Black Ops's like career, like before before Black Ops ever gets shut down, you know, or something like that. I would like to go back, play that game a ton with the AK-47, just so it's my number one weapon, so I could have the pride of saying that the FAMAS is not my number one weapon in that game. So of course, it was the big OP gun, and uh, everyone used it, including myself back in the day. So I never, I haven't actually gone back and done that yet. It's still, it's I'm, slow progress, I suppose, would be the term to give uh, my AK becoming my most used gun in Black Ops 1. More important like higher up on the priority list is actually getting back to prestige master on black ops 2 if you guys don't know i made up to prestige master and black ops 2 pretty quickly uh, when the game first came out and then i stayed at prestige master for quite a bit then i got kind of bored of not leveling and stuff like that so i kind of reset my stats on that game and i started re-leveling playing with subscribers a lot and stuff like that you know and i'm getting close to hitting prestige master again i'm actually 10th prestige level 45 i want to say is what i'm at right now so i'm getting pretty close uh to getting prestige master for the second time in that game i'll probably make a video about it and stuff but uh yeah that's higher up on the priority list and then probably eventually in your over time i'll go back to black ops 1 and make the ak-47 my most used weapon next question he writes Dear Nero, I've been thinking a lot about people and how they work. Whether I'm reading in the comment section of a video or just having a conversation with a friend, I see more and more of a trend of the good old days. And for example, when looking at YouTube comments, I see people talking about how the old Call of Duty games are so good now compared to when they were in their prime. Now this led me to the question, are things just getting worse and worse as we go on or... Is this some form of human brain activity relating to missing things we once had? I would love to know your opinion. I appreciate it. A dedicated subscriber, Matthew from Colorado. So Matthew, the word you're looking for is nostalgia. Nostalgia is the word that we are looking for. See, that's the thing about nostalgia, right? Regardless of what it was, you will have nostalgia for years past. That's what's going to happen. It happens in almost every form of life. And it's honestly one of the most powerful emotions that human beings have, at least in my experience. So nostalgia. Nostalgia, right? A lot of times here on my YouTube channel, you hear me talk about World of War. You hear me talk about Call of Duty 4. And those were the games I started out on, for the most part, here in the Call of Duty series. I played them quite a bit, extensively. Uh, well, well over 40 days of playtime in Call of Duty 4. And the thing about that is, that's just in the multiplayer. I can't even tell you how much I spent on the campaign, then re-being the campaign, doing it all on veteran, and getting all the achievements. I can't tell you how much time I've spent in private matches, or the time I spent you know, playing with uh, people in just open lobbies and stuff. It's pretty insane. So you could probably take that uh, 40 days and make it 50 with the because you can't track you can't keep track of your private match time. And I spent a lot of time in private matches and playing campaign stuff as well in that game. World of War is the same way uh, in terms of the actual multiplayer itself. I have just about 40 days of playtime. That's not counting all the game battles we did and all the private matches and open lobbies and campaign and going back getting all the achievements on that game. Not counting playing World of War on the PC and custom zombies and stuff. I just really enjoyed the game. The thing about it is is it's nostalgia that kind of makes me really enjoy playing those games because you know I can look at a map or I could walk around that map and that map is just kind of flooded with memories in one way or another you know I think of CeeLo which is my favorite map in Call of Duty of all time and part of the reason why CeeLo is my favorite map of all time is partly due to nostalgia to be perfectly honest because I have so many memories on that map you know you think back to I'm sure barely any of you can even picture this map but on the back of the map there is a three-story building right it's on the far end of the map back in the middle of freaking nowhere no reason whatsoever to go in that building in any game mode at all just no reason but it's so far back there and it's a three-story building it looked like only a two-story building and we thought it was because we would go there right and we would snipe out of that building all the time myself my cousin and a couple friends of mine we would always play xbox together and we would go to that building with our bouncing betties and our snipe rifles and we would all be at a different window and we, we would be like literally you look at this building every single window has a sniper in it and we're uh we try to snipe people across the map that's what we did that's how we had fun with call of duty when we first started was you know uh, trying to be like a scout sniper and then later on we learned hey guys there's a ladder over there. And there was this ladder, which for whatever reason we never noticed, we were too busy and too focused and tunnel visioned on getting to those windows. There was this ladder for us to climb up, and now you're in top of like in this attic area, and there's another window for you to look out on the very tippy top, which was always my window because I called it. And it was just so much fun to do that. We'd play search and destroy, and we would like do our little army crawls through the cornfields and stuff like that just to try and get to the bombs on anyone seeing us. We, we, we had a lot of fun. You know, we had a lot of fun on those maps. And we enjoy that. And so when I think of like the newer 
newer Call of Duty games, and I don't have those, necessarily those same memories in the newer Call of Duty games because I'm not playing with my cousin anymore. You know, my cousin and my friends, they don't play Call of Duty anymore, for the most part. Uh, some of them do, but for the most part, uh, most of those people are gone. Uh, you look at SB. SB Nero is, of course, my gamertag on Xbox Live, and uh, SB is not for Space Bound. It's not for uh, the Strictly Business Competitive Team. It's for Strictly Business My Team. As you guys don't know, I, I made a team of my friends and subscribers. We made it was just a just a clan, basically, uh, as people would call it, back in Modern Warfare 2. So this is like back in 2009, uh, just before Modern Warfare. No, no, it was just before Black. It was in 2010, I believe, 2009, 2010, before Black Ops drops, when uh, we all made our name SB whatever, like SB Nero, SB Vulture, SB Pidgey, SB Cardinal, SB uh, Toucan. Wow, there's a lot of bird names in here. Not thinking about it. SB Tryhard, SB Deadly, SB Pretty Boy. All these people, right? Uh, that you guys may see in my videos. SB Marksman. Um, all these people we used to play with, and a lot of those people don't play Xbox anymore. You know, that people grow up, people get lives and stuff like that, you know. And so I look back at all the time that we spent, you know, playing on Black Ops and Modern Warfare 2, and it's like, man, we had so much fun back in the day. And that's part of the nostalgia that people have. And that can be related to anything. You know, I have nostalgia thinking back to elementary school, which, what would that be called uh, uh, in other countries? I don't know. Basically, uh, up until you're like, you know, 10, 12 years old, you know, school from like ages, you know, six, uh, we call it first grade to like fifth grade. I have nostalgia for that because, um, I think back to that, it, that was when you're like just kind of learning about things in life. You know, you start noticing girls, you know, or boys, depending on uh, what you're into. Uh, you start noticing that stuff. You start just learning about the world around you a bit. And it's kind of the it's kind of weird for me because my elementary school ended up getting shut down so they could, because it was a smaller elementary school, like out in the middle of nowhere. And they shut it down so they could put most of the people from our school into like a super school. They're they're shutting down a lot of the smaller elementary schools around this area and throwing them all into like one big super school. That way they could save budget, you know? And so they shut down the school and then it was just like abandoned it was pretty creepy and uh we we, we snuck into it a couple times stuff like that, just to walk through it again and stuff but um it's weird it's actually kind of sad the school that i went to got bought out by some guy and he's turning it into a go-kart track like he's gonna demolish most of it and it's like ah, my memories my nostalgia but the term you're thinking about is nostalgia that's why people think back call of Duty games aren't necessarily getting worse it's just that we have all of these memories from these other games and we want those same feelings we want those same memories back but the thing about it is they're unattainable. You cannot bring relive those memories. You just can't do it. I don't think the Call of Duty is necessarily getting worse. It's that it just isn't the same as what it used to be. And so for a lot of people, and sometimes myself included, I think I'm definitely guilty of this myself. It's like, well, why is this game like it was back in 2009? It's like, well, it's because that was six years ago. You know, <laughs> I think it's time to change up some things, try out some new stuff. You know, it's not necessarily because it's getting worse. It's just because we're kind of blinded. We have these nostalgia rose tinted glasses going on. Next question. He writes. Dear Nero, as you know, Black Ops 3 will have specialized classes that you can play and they will have their own unique abilities in multiplayer. My question is, what sort of ability or abilities, if you have more than one in mind, would you like to see in multiplayer? Also, where would you stand if they decide to add DLC characters to have their own abilities later on in the game's life cycle? Thanks and have a wonderful day, Josh from Illinois. Josh, this is a pretty interesting question. So he's talking about specialists in Black Ops 3, of course. What ability would I like to see? Now, I gotta say, after racking my brain for a little bit, I can't think of anything that I would really, really want to see. Aside from just maybe a specialist that just ignores or all but ignores, you know, any kind of explosive, whether it's uh, lethal grenades, tactical grenades, or whatever. I just want a class that has like Flak Jacket Pro and Tac Mask Pro just built into it. You know, and I can use spend my perks on other stuff. That's why I want a specialist to have. Basically, just a guy that doesn't get blown up. Poor girl, I guess. That doesn't get blown up by anything, and tactical grenades don't affect him. And just, basically, yeah, black jacket and tack mask all the way. Uh, the answer to the second part of your question, uh, what would I think if uh, they add DLC characters? These DLC specialists with their own abilities later on? That's pretty sketchy, I'm not going to lie. These characters would have to be, like, skins, in a way. Like, reskins of existing characters. Otherwise, you're definitely going to be entering the pay to win territory there so that's pretty it seems like the kind of thing they're gonna end up doing though it seems like the kind of thing that they might end up doing but then again we have faith in Treyarch because Treyarch's never let us down before so we will have to see about that next question I'm gonna try and speed through these guys because goodness gracious this video is going on forever he's gonna write dear Nero I'm wondering why you stopped uploading Battlefield Hardline gameplays and why you stopped playing the game I bought the game a couple of days ago and I had a blast I would love to see YouTubers mix up the list of games that they play keep up the great work this person don't want to show their name. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so that's interesting. A uh, little name there to leave. But uh, why have I not been playing Battle with Hardline, and why have I stopped playing the game? So I'm... <laughs> I think you can kind of classify yourself as a different kind of gamer, right? So there's many different kinds of gamers. People that, uh, there's mono gamers, right? And maybe some of you guys fall into this category. There are gamers who like one, one particular game, one kind of game, and that's the kind of game that they play. Or maybe you can narrow it down, they only play one specific game. You know, maybe some people only like playing first-person shooter games, and there's other people that only like playing Call of Duty. You know, you can even get more detailed with it. There's other people that like playing a giant wide variety of games. You know, they don't, they, you know, uh, what is it, Jack of All Trades, Master of None? Uh, those people can can, they play just so many games, they're constantly getting new games, cheap games, expensive games, whatever. They're playing a bunch of different games. They don't get very far in any of them, but they play a bunch of games. I fall into the category where is if I like something, I end up loving that thing, and I play that one particular thing a lot. So there's basically a bunch of franchises that I'm already just in love with, I like to play with, and I find that I don't have enough time to play as much of them as I already want to, and adding more games to the mix is kind of difficult. So those games I'm talking about are like Call of Duty. Of course, I play a bunch of Call of Duty and have been for freaking ever. Hearthstone is fantastic because of Hearthstone I started playing WoW which is fantastic. I want to get back into Elder Scrolls Online especially with it coming to console. I may be getting back into that game as well. Of course you got the Borderlands franchise which I am just freaking forever in love with as well as now I'm like on this kick where I just freaking love custom zombies so I'm playing a lot of that on my PC now as well. So it's like I have all these games I already want to play and any free time I have I want to spend playing these games. And then something like Battlefield Hardline comes out where it's an okay game that I enjoy playing but it's like I don't I, I'd rather play these things because I love these things all to death. So I'd rather just go ahead and play those. Battlefield Hardline, not to say uh, Battlefield Hardline is a bad game. I enjoy the time I spent with it, but just right now it's something that I don't want to prioritize other over other games, I guess. Uh, of course, I did some sponsored videos with EA, and that was pretty fun. I definitely enjoy doing sponsored videos for obvious reasons, and Battlefield Hardline was a fun game. I made videos out of it, and I'll probably make more videos out of it when they decide to put out DLC, because they'll probably have a bunch of sponsored people with the Ronku program, who... There's a lot of YouTubers in that program. Myself, Wildcat, and a bunch of other people are all in that program, so we'll probably do more uh, sponsored videos for Battlefield Hardline when DLC comes out, but just right now, I just don't really have the drive or the motivation to play it. Maybe it's because didn't change around enough things within the game or maybe it's just something about the way it plays on consoles that I'm just not really a giant fan of. It still feels, I mean, I admit it, even in my sponsored videos, like the game still kind of feels clunky and I think that's, I miss the smoothness and the fluidity that we have in Call of Duty and I don't know, I'm just not super into it, I suppose, and I went way longer on with that question than I thought I would. We have a lot of questions still to go, guys. Next one, he's going to write, Dear Nero, with almost 3,000 videos uploaded on Nero's Cinema and Nero's Let's Plays combined, you obviously spend a lot of your day maintaining your YouTube channels. But I was wondering, what do you do when you're not busy with YouTube? Keep up the great work, Alex from Wisconsin. So Alex, when I read this question, I went and actually counted the videos, not individually, but of course I can see the overall numbers on my channels, and I have 1,601 videos on Nero Cinema, not counting this one, and I have 753 videos over on Nero's Let's Plays, which is a total of 2,354 videos, which is a freaking butt ton. And yes, I do spend a lot of time putting together videos for my YouTube channel and recording footage for my YouTube channel. What do I do when I'm not busy with YouTube? Play video games for the most part. <laughs> I like gaming. That, that's why my YouTube channels are based around gaming. That's what I like to do when I'm making videos for YouTube and quote unquote working. I'm gaming. When I'm uh, not doing anything for YouTube, I'm just relaxing and playing video games. I'm just playing video games because video games consume a large portion of my life. I like to watch YouTube videos. I like to play video games. I like to occasionally just go out for drives and just uh, go driving and stuff like that. Now that the uh, summer and the warm weather is coming, I definitely like going to uh, different kinds of pools or places to swim, stuff like that. That's definitely stuff I like to do. I like to golf as well. I don't know how many of you guys are aware of that, but I like to golf as well. That's something I like to do with my friends. That's a lot of fun as well. But uh, yeah, for the most part, gaming is like the number one thing I do as a hobby, and I have a bunch of other smaller little ones outside of that. But primarily, yeah, it's YouTube and gaming. That's what I do. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what do you have planned for your second channel after finishing the Borderlands DLC? Is it straight into the pre-sequel DLC, or do you have any other games on your list? Thanks from Liam. So Liam, on my Let's Play channel, I plan on doing more custom zombies. I, of course, plan on finishing up the Borderlands 1 DLC, and we might jump into the pre-sequel DLC. We'll have to see. Right now, the Claptastic Voyage is out, and I might go through and finish that, but it's kind of a longer DLC. Maybe we'll wait until I can get some friends to do it with, or maybe I'll do it solo. Who knows? We'll see about that. But yeah, right now, it's basically going to be custom zombies. 
Zombies and finishing up Borderlands DLC and maybe jumping into some newer games, depending on what those games may be. I'm very selective as the games I want to do Let's Plays of. But yeah, for right now, expect more Borderlands DLC and Custom Zombies over there on YouTube.com slash Nero's Let's Plays. And this question also kind of ties into it, I suppose. He's going to write, Dear Nero, now that all the Borderlands content is on the disc with the Handsome Collection, there is a high chance at least one new storyline DLC will be released for Borderlands 2. If there's a new DLC release, what theme would you want it to be, George from Bradford? So George, I don't, I definitely don't think they're going to be releasing new DLC for Borderlands 2. There's no way. There's no way they're going to do that. The pre-sequel's out. I'm not even entirely positive they're going to have new DLC for the pre-sequel, just because all of 2K Australia got shut down, and those, of course, were the people that put together the pre-sequel and their pre-sequel's DLC. There's only one DLC out so far, so, you know, Borderlands 2, we had so much DLC, just a freaking buttload of it, and then the pre-sequel, we've got One Piece DLC, and then the freaking studio gets shut down, so who knows if there's even going to be more DLC for that. But yeah, I don't think Gearbox or anyone who's still working on these games are going to uh, be putting anything more into Borderlands 2. If anything, if they're working on anything Borderlands related at all, it's going to be a Borderlands 3. And what would I like to see with the Borderlands 3? I would like to see it be a lot like Borderlands 2 because Borderlands 2 was freaking fantastic and the pre-sequel and the ending of that definitely set up Borderlands 3. But still, man... I want it to be a lot more like Borderlands 2. Because the pre-sequel, I didn't like nearly as much. Just because it was it was too different. I didn't like it. Next question. He's going to write, Dear Nero, I don't plan on getting big on YouTube or doing very well. As of right now, it is a hobby. Let me ask. When you started YouTube, did you ever want to get partnered? Or did it start as a hobby or something that just seemed fun and creative? Keep up the great work. Myself from Texas. <laughs> so... That's not me writing this question. He actually wrote his name as myself, apparently. But uh, when I started YouTube, did I have any aspirations of getting partnered? I had aspirations of being successful on YouTube. I think, of course, I still do. Um, when I started YouTube, I had many channels. I, w I was one of those people that, like, had a new channel, like, every week. Like, I don't like the name anymore. I'm trying to change, change my channel. I'm starting off new, you know. I had a bunch of channels when I first started. Um, when I first started, I would post montages and things like that. Occasionally, I would do commentary stuff, but mostly it was montage-related stuff. And Nero Cinema was the first time I ever actually took my YouTube channel seriously and actually tried to do very well with it. Uh, I, of course, posted Black Ops and Battlefield 3 because that was a brand new game. Uh, I posted Black Ops and Battlefield 3 for a bit. Uh, still, I didn't really have any giant aspirations of being successful. My aspirations were to just basically be a good YouTuber and I wanted to be popular. You know, I wanted to be like on the same level as like what people I watch, which was like Wings of Redemption, Xcal, uh, Hutch back in the day. You know, I, I watched all these people. I'm like, I want to be a YouTuber too. You know, so I'd make these videos. I never really had aspirations of getting partnered or making a career or anything out of it. I just made videos uh, trying to get to their level of success. And after like six months or so here on the Earth Cinema, I actually got partnered with Machinima and I've been doing YouTube full time ever since. So it was pretty crazy. I, I really... I didn't go into it with the aspirations of making money. If, that, if that's the question you're asking, I did not start YouTube with any aspirations of making money. I started YouTube just wanting to make Call of Duty videos and be a part of the community that I was already a part of even more by actually being a YouTuber. You know, I watch videos all the time, and that's I consumed, like I said earlier, I consumed a big part of my day, gaming and YouTube. You know, even before I was a YouTuber, that consumed a big part of my day because I was so interested in it. You know, something I enjoyed doing so much. So I wanted to make my own videos. I wanted to have my own channel, and I had many, many channels. I had team channels. Channels. I had so much stuff going on uh, with all these different stuff I put together, but it was all really kind of hit or miss. And I'm like, with Nero Cinema, I'm going to make a full blown run at this. And here we are over three years later. So, next question. He writes, Dear Nero, I've been a long time sub to the channel. And do you think that you'll ever do Minecraft again? Thanks. If you can answer, Tyler from Pennsylvania. So, Tyler, if I were to do more Minecraft, which keep in mind, I used to play a ton of Minecraft. I was really into the entire idea of hardcore survival. Uh, basically, you know, one life and you're dead. I liked using Minecraft as a survival game game and playing with friends and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun that way. Um, if there is going to be more Minecraft, it's going to be over on Nearest Let's Plays. Uh, Near Sim, of course, is mainly Call of Duty, Titanfall, Battlefield, uh, big FPS games, you guys know. Um, that's mainly what Nearest Sim is, and it, uh, all of their gaming content is usually on Nearest Let's Plays, so go ahead and check out that channel if you would like. And I can't say there's going to be more Minecraft. There's already a bunch of it over there, uh, mainly all hardcore survival, but um, 
If there's going to be more, it's probably going to be hardcore survival stuff. I was really big into factions for a while. I was playing on people's servers, and we would play factions, which is a Minecraft uh, custom game, which is a ton of fun, man. Basically, you build a base, you build a fort, and you can go raid other people's forts, other people's bases in this giant open world, and you can do whatever you want. There's an entire store for you to buy things with your you know, your in-game currency, as well as real-life monies and stuff. It's, it's cool. It was a really fun system. I really enjoyed factions. I got quite addicted to it, to be perfectly honest. We played a bunch of factions. And I think it was Woody's really, really Gamertag's Minecraft server is actually what we played a bunch of. But then we realized how easy it was to cheat at that kind of thing. And that really kind of killed the fun for me. Like, uh, we had people that were, like, obviously cheating. They could obviously see through walls. They had, like, what, what we called kill aura on. Whereas if you walked within two feet of them, they automatically start attacking and won't even be looking at you but still hitting you. And it was so easy to get these mods so we, like, installed them ourselves. We're like, wow, this was really easy to get. Now I press this one button, I can see all of your hidden chests if all throughout the entirety of your base stuff it was really easy to cheat basically and there's really no way to moderate that kind of thing aside from somebody saying hey that guy's cheating you know and stuff like that so it's it, that, that, that kind of killed the fun for me so if there was going to be uh, more minecraft stuff here on youtube it would probably be hardcore survival and actually i think there's some minecraft factions videos here on your cinema they were posted a long time ago. I'm pretty positive about that. But still, uh, yeah, that would be the case if there's going to be more Minecraft stuff. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I've been watching your videos for about a year now, and I first got into them when you were doing your top 10 maps and stuff like that. Would you ever go back to doing top 10s? I look forward to Dear Nero every week from Tyler in the Great White North. So Tyler, yeah, there's going to be more top 10 videos. I'm just being super lazy about putting them together because they're very high effort videos, and I'm super lazy when it comes to doing them. But uh, yes, I have most of the script written for a top 10 kill streaks. So I'm also going to be doing a uh, top 10 worst of different kinds of maps and guns and stuff like that, and maybe even be more specific, like top 10 guns and Modern Warfare 2, top 10 maps in Call of Duty Ghost, you know, stuff like that. Uh, perhaps we end up doing stuff like that as well, because people like watching top 10 videos, and I like putting them together. Just, once again, they're a lot more high effort. And if you guys like that kind of idea, just type in, like, top 10 maps in Call of Duty on YouTube, and you'll probably find my video somewhere in there. And, or just type in top 10 maps near cinema, and you'll find, that's probably my favorite video I've ever made. I still look back at that video, I'm like, I really, really like that video. So I'm hoping to make the rest of them just as good as that. But right now, we have the top 10 guns, top 10 maps, top 10 zombie maps as well as top 10 camos uh, so far and I'm looking forward to making some more next and final question ladies and gentlemen finally he's going to write to dear Nero if black ops 3 gives Sony the exclusives are you going to buy a PlayStation 4 Larry land from New York City so Larry I believe I've answered this question before but it's a question I get a lot Actually, a ton. So I'm going to answer it again. If the Call of Duty exclusivity deal does move to PlayStation, will I buy PS4 and transfer over there? I really don't think that I will. Uh, I may just purchase it for the sake of doing it, kind of chalked up as a business expense and whatever. But at where it sits right now is I like my Xbox because I like the Xbox. That's the reason why I got it. I like my gamer tag. I like my friends list. I like the whole Xbox way of doing things. That's why I got an Xbox once because I enjoyed my Xbox 360. That's why I purchased it. I didn't purchase it because I get Call of Duty DLC early, that was just a bonus, I suppose. And if that bonus were to move over to PlayStation, I don't really see myself wanting to purchase a PlayStation just for that reason, you know? I, I wouldn't play the PlayStation a lot, you know, there's no real exclusive games out there besides, like, maybe MLB The Show that make me really want to purchase a PlayStation 4. It's just something that I don't really prioritize that much. And also, just, like, the videos I do make of the DLC, you know, it's like, here's some app walkthroughs, here's the review of it, you know, videos like that, uh, they don't do that well, you know, all things considered, especially because Call of Duty themselves, they take uh, YouTubers that are, of course, much bigger than me, and with good reason, I suppose, and they fly them out to LA and allow them to play the DLC early. So these people are posting up footage of the DLC with full-on hands-on gameplay and stuff like several days before the DLC is even out. So as a result, you know, it's like, well, I'm not even going to get the main views on my videos anyway because people, this is old news to a lot of people now. So it really isn't a whole lot of reason for me to do it. There's a lot of negatives when it comes to doing that, you know. It's like I'm not going to get uh, a lot of uh, feed great feedback and a lot of views and stuff like that on the videos I already do make and now you're going to be asking me to buy like a three or four hundred dollar system and a new game and, and start paying for a PlayStation Live or PlayStation Plus, I think it's called, or PlayStation Live or PlayStation Now or where there's so many systems over there, man. So many things they're doing. Basically, they want me to pay for PlayStation as well. And it's like that seems like a lot of paying for stuff that I'm already doing now, which already isn't that successful. But of course, I still like being able to, uh, I like being able to make map walkthroughs, I like being able to do reviews and stuff like that. So I can say, hey guys, so this is what the map looks like inside now, so you know what you're getting into, you're knowing what you're purchasing. I like 
being able to do that, but at what price? At what price, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. It might, might just buy a PlayStation 4 for the sake of buying a PlayStation 4 and occasionally doing open lobby slant, and then, of course, I could still do the DLCs if, in fact, the exclusivity deal goes over to them. But we don't know that's going to happen. Yeah, you know, we have no idea, so we will see. We'll see. I, I'm not, I'll, I'll never rule out anything. I, I won't even rule out the fact I'd buy a Wii U. I don't know why I would buy a Wii U, but it's entirely possible that I will for some reason. I'll never rule out anything like that, so it's entirely possible I'll get a PlayStation 4, but I don't think that having the Call of Duty exclusivity deal move over to PlayStation would really influence that decision one way or the other, because I honestly really don't care that much, but uh, that is this week's episode of Dear Nero. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel it be Please leave a rating on this video. Good golly, I'm looking at the timer. This is going to be a long one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a long episode of Dear Nero. I don't think we're going to be doing this week in 1080p, ladies and gentlemen, because that's going to make this video take forever and a half to render out, which definitely doesn't sound very fun, but still, hopefully you guys all enjoyed the video. It's definitely a lot lengthier. I was just copying and pasting questions over from my message folder into this little uh, text document here, like I always do. I'm like... Holy crap, I have like three pages worth of questions here. Okay then, I'm going to be recording this for quite a long time, so... <laughs> Still, I hope you guys all enjoyed it, and if you guys would like to submit your questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. That's all you need to do. Go to my YouTube channel, go to the About tab, go to the Send Message button. From there, type in Dear Nero, followed by your question. That's it. Very simple, very easy process. I go through them all every Wednesday, copy and paste them into a text folder, and then I will go ahead and read them off, then add them all together to make sure I didn't mess up anywhere, and there we go. That's how Dear Nero is made every single week, and you guys seem to be enjoying it. We're getting closer and closer, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 150. Actually, Actually, allow me to open up YouTube here. Now, forgive me as you hear some clicking and possibly some clacking uh, from my keyboard and mouse right here, but I need to go and find my playlist. And let's go to the playlist here. Now, Dear Nero. This is Dear Nero episode 145. I lost count for obvious reasons, but yes, we're getting closer and closer to episode 150, which is pretty awesome. So once again, regardless, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.